TLO, what's poppin'? We are on kick, K-I-C-K dot com. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, this above me is the channel that if you miss it live and you want to see if there's any highlights from that live, it'll be here. But you can also replay the whole live fast forward front to back on kick.com uh, under my profile. We do watch exclusive things on there that are only watched on there, such as, you know, going to start Top Gear on there, um, along with like three other things that we're going to be watching exclusively over there. Um, so participate. This is Patreon. We also watch stuff here that does not make it to from YouTube. These are the good shows, though. These are the main shows that we can't watch on YouTube. Kick gets the runoff. <laughs> Uh, don't forget we do got Patreon, I mean the, uh, merch, TLO, um, cheaper shirt on there is 17 pounds, so probably less in the UK, but yeah, man, check it out, man, the link to all of this is down below in the description inside of something called the link tree, click the link tree, I think it'll pop up, gang, go, top 10 Americanisms that really annoy British people, okay, first off, I want to start by apologizing, and fight the fanny pack. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 Americanisms that really annoy British people. How are you doing in England? Remember, an elevator is called a lift, a mile is called a kilometer, and botulism is called steak and kidney pie. Before we begin, if you enjoy this video, be sure to send clunky colloquialisms content. For this list, we're rallying against the words, phrases, and clunky colloquialisms that have slipped into the English language, all thanks to our American cousins. So, get your red pens out, the trash talk stops here. I hate that the flats are now called apartments, I hate that sweets are now called candy, and I hate that instead of nipping it to the shops, you nip it to the convenience store. I hate it. Number 10, waiting on something. So we keep waiting, waiting, waiting on the world to change. American names that waiting on something? In general, US prepositions can be pretty awkward, but wait on seems to have caught on in the UK too. Physically speaking, you can wait, as in delay or dally, on anything you like, on the platform, the doorstep, even on the car, if you intend to recline on its roof. But with non-physical things like decisions, bank transfers and movie releases, you definitely wait for them. Of course, waiters really do wait on, but most of the rest of us really don't. Oh, thanks very much. Uh, you blonde bastard. <laughs> Number nine, I have gotten. I mean, I, I had gotten out of control and I, I didn't even realize it. If gotten were a noun, which it isn't, then you could conceivably have it. Oh, they mean like words. Okay, I'm lost. Okay, now I got it. Got it. Maybe on toast or somewhere in your kitchen. But have we really gotten excited, anxious, or suitably irate? <laughs> And when we splash out on designer t-shirts and tell our friends all about it the following day, we haven't gotten new clothes. We just got them. In fairness, I don't use the word gotten. So hearing it is it's kind of cringe. I don't use that word. I don't I can't picture a time where I've used the word gotten. It don't even sound right coming out of my mouth. I think that's a like some of these are geography. Like <laughs> you gotta be in certain places to use certain some of these words. Most linguists agree that this sneaky suffix is rooted in traditional British English. Think ill-gotten gains, but it's a mostly American habit nowadays. Yes, might have gotten away with it too. If it wasn't for these blasted kids and their dog. Then you kids deserve a big thanks. Number eight, you do the math. Right, let's do the math. This one just doesn't add up. I used this before. Why study mathematics plural just to be told to do the math singular? Given that this phrase is usually dropped at the end of a debate as some kind of all-conquering conversation ender and insurmountable point prover, we Brits can be quick to bristle whenever it's issued our way. We would suggest going back to school, but that throws up the whole college-university hoo-ha, and there just aren't enough hours in the day. One way or another, it's a mathematical fact. It's, it's like Vegas. Number seven, which pants are you wearing? Clumsy line of questioning on an X-rated phone line, or innocent inquiry about another person's dress code? Just shut it and put your pants on! Of course, the underwear or trousers talk all depends upon which side of the Atlantic you're asking from. Interchangeable nouns can often lead expats to embarrassing situations. 
Remember, your car needs petrol unless it needs gas, which isn't the same fuel used for older style ovens. Wait, what? Your car needs petrol unless it needs gas. Sneakers are trainers, although there's nothing especially sly about them, and Band-Aid means plaster, but it's also a seminal Plasty. 80s charity single, in case you forgot. Number six, finding the first floor. To another small but significant difference between British and American English, and one which, having crept over from the States, can cause understandable confusion in the UK. When you walk into a building at street level, you're on the ground floor, not the first floor. The first floor is one flight of stairs upwards, but the Americanism says that that level is the second floor. It's not, but you can start to see why it's vital that the lift's in full working order. In most buildings, it do go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But in high rises, there's a G, and 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 like in high rises in America, so we we some high rise buildings are G, the ground ground level, and then it goes one, two, three, four. Number five, have a nice day. Thanks. Have a good day. Don't tell me what to do. In general, most Brits balk at Americans' apparently unbridled enthusiasm, but it's difficult to criticise their commitment to peppy customer service. But phrases like good job and have a great day can sound forced and insincere when muttered with the moodiness of a Brit cold caller. Why the f*** do you keep asking me that? It's all in the delivery, this one. Of course, everyone should try to be good to everyone else, and wishing someone well is a lovely thing to do, but let's say it like we mean it. So that's why y'all just say cheers? Number four, quite right. I never understood this one either. Quite right. What do you mean I'm quite right? I'm right right. I'm I'm either right or I'm wrong. I can't be quite right. Not quite my tempo. Again, this Americanism mostly frustrates yes because no. of the misunderstandings it can inspire. We Brits mostly use quite as a middle ground between not at all and absolutely, for words like dangerous, delicate, or difficult. If something's quite damaged, it's not completely beyond repair. So, with the dispatch of the sergeant, we will now be able to concentrate on the eradication uh -huh. Uh -huh. of our hoodie infestation. Quite right. But the US uses quite as a blanket substitute for very. So, if something's quite extraordinary, then it really is extraordinary. But problems come if you're described as quite intelligent or quite beautiful. For self-esteem's sake, which is it? I've never used quite anyway. Doesn't matter. Quite right. Number three, alternative facts. Did you throw Jeremy Paxman out of a window? Oh, well, kind of. Oh. A term from the top, this idea was first formed following former US press secretary Sean Spicer's insistence that Donald Trump's presidential inauguration ceremony was well attended, despite photos seemingly showing that it wasn't. Counselor to the president, Kellyanne Conway, famously defended Spicer, claiming that his version of events was built not on falsehoods, but on alternative facts. And they're giving Sean Spicer, our press secretary, gave alternative facts to that. But the She didn't even want to believe what she was about to say. She was, I'm not really about to say this. Oh, all right. I mean, Sean Spicer, our press secretary, gave alternative facts. Couldn't even get it out. To that. But the point remains Wait a minute. Alternative that there's facts? It's jargon worthy of the British writer George Orwell, but we can thank America for making it mainstream and for providing the buzzword for post-truth politics. I ain't never even heard of that until just now. Number two, the least worst option. I'm doing this for the city, not you. You're the least worst option. Our runner-up rounds on another apparently diplomatic double negative and three words which really mean nothing at all. Because what can a least worst option ever really be? It's true. If there's something worse than the worst possible something, then the first worst something was never the worst in the first place. You have a better bad idea than this? That's, that's true. This is the best bad idea we have, sir. By far. It's pretty simple, really. Anything that- I think people say it in only com com comedic, comedic ways. It's less worse than anything else can't possibly be labeled the worst. And the Situation. least worst of those things that are less worse is actually the best option available. <sighs> Hallelujah. Number one, I could care less. I didn't care less. I, I use this one. 
I just want to do my job. Delivered when someone's past the point of caring, and if you've stuck with this video, then this- But I think I say I couldn't care less. Presumably isn't you, so bravo. I couldn't care less makes perfect sense. Lose two letters and an apostrophe, however, and it definitely does not. I really couldn't care less. I could right. care less implies that there's still some caring to be had, which is rarely what the person speaking wants to convey. I could care less is like conceding that worse things have happened, but with regard to American English, they rarely have. Because that, as an expression for not or hardly caring, just makes no sense. Do you agree? More stuff I gotta be careful of when I go to the UK. That's tough. DLL, leave a like, comment, I'm gone.